Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a quick um, journal with me, a blue and brown theme, so I've chosen some um, appropriate coloured uh, washi tapes and I'm going to be doing a little bit of stenciling as well with some new Tim Holtz stencils that I just, just arrived. Um, uh, we're going to be using some blue and brown inks in that that's the colour theme of, of my journal page today. And um, I've collected various bits of ephemera in those colours and um, just I always keep a, a box of materials on my desk and I just rummage through those to find pieces that I want to use um, on my page. So we're going to start with some stenciling and I'd like to use this stencil here and I think we'll try the blue uh, ink. This is just a Ranger uh, ink that I use um, with a sponge dabber. So put plenty of ink on there. And then I think I'm probably gonna just do some stenciling in the corners of the spread. So um, I'll probably start in this left hand top corner and we'll just do it um, a small piece across the corner there. So I'll just dab that ink across through there don't want it too intense so just a light dab is fine and then I'll do a little bit over in this corner as well maybe just do this bottom bottom left corner first sometimes it's easy to actually turn your book around to get a, just a, just a better angle about right. I can look how this is going to turn out. Okay, so that's that side. And then I think I'm going to put some more over in the opposite corners, but probably not with the kind of line. So having a bit of a more freer edge to this page. So kind of just run a, a random area over there and then we'll do finish it off and do a little bit also in this corner here. So you can see that this sort of stenciling kind of frames my page, um, just gets rid of the blankness <laughs> which can be quite off-putting when you're starting on a journal page but just adding some very simple stenciling just to frame the pages um, I find always always helps me sort of get started um, then I think I'm going to use some of the other stencil with the brown ink so I loved this uh, coffee stain um, and drip stencil so I'm going to take some of um, my Walnut Distress Ink and um, let's put uh, some of the coffee stain circles or rings over here. And at this point, you know, I don't really know how much of this is going to get covered up by, by the collaging that I'll do. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. If I want to add some additional stencil afterwards, I can or if I feel that's enough. Um, that's fine. So at the moment I'm just kind of just really building up layers. So this is my the base layer of, of my journal page um, where I'm just kind of laying the sort of background if you like. So um, and I, as I said I don't want these too intense. So the sponge with the ink just gives that sort of nice sort of background faint um, look that I want to achieve. So I'm just deciding where to put some additional kind of splashes. So I think I'll just put them over here at the left bottom and slightly overlapping them as well over the uh, blue stenciling that I've already added. So just by overlapping the layers, it really pulls everything together and kind of merges everything a little bit better. So that's uh, looking quite nice. I've got a little bit overlapping the sort of fold of the page. I, yep, I like that. That's fine. That's looking okay. 
So we can put those inks away for now and so we might we might decide to do a little bit more at the end perhaps we'll, we'll see how it goes. So the first thing I want to do is have a look through some of the materials I've gathered together, um, see what bits I'd like to use. Um, as I said, I've collected some browns and blues in keeping with the, the theme, which was one of Helen's General With Purpose prompts this month to create a general page using these colours. So I really like, this is some lovely uh, vintage wallpaper. I bought a vintage wallpaper sample book from a recount in France and some of the papers are beautiful. Uh, they're very delicate actually. So um, I'll just use a little piece of that and then some of this dark brown paper as well. Um, at this point, you know, it's the, the size of the pieces don't matter, but I try and put the bigger pieces down first. So, um, and I've decided I want my collage kind of at the bottom left hand side of the spread. Um, then I want to add a little bit of interest. These are, I've put, put two sort of plainish pieces of paper. So I want to add some interest now. So I've taken some vintage book page, page and um, I'll just add a little piece of that as well. So you can see that these kind of are more or less about the same size pieces. Um, and I'm still kind of working on building the background now of the sort of collaged area. So to break up that, um, those brown layers, um, I've just grabbed a little piece of blue paper and um, just to kind of tuck that in there, just to sort of break those sort of edges of the brown pieces up a little bit um, and bring and sort of tie it all together with the brown and blue theme. And then I'm just going to try maybe including a few other pieces. I quite like this scrapbook card, um, sort of dark brown with a pattern on it. So I just want a little small piece of that. So uh, see where I prefer it. Quite often I'll just try pieces in different spots on the page before I kind of finally decide. As you can see, I'm not gluing anything down at this point. I'm just trying out pieces, seeing where they might fit. Um, I might decide on one piece and then and then change my mind. It really depends on how it sort of builds up really over, over the time I'm working on it. So I quite like this old ticket which had some blue and brown colour in it so that kind of went really well with the theme. So I'd like to include some of that. That looks quite nice up there. I'd also created some sort of handmade washi tape so I'm using that because it just ties in the colour just ties in a little better than, than the washi tab I actually have so I'm just looking to see um, how that would work and that works quite well. I see again I'm still not sticking anything down at this point. Um, there is this um, bluebird it's printed onto some transparent label paper so I want to incorporate that. So that's going to actually be transparent once it's stuck down. It's not going to have the sort of white background, but I quite like the way that is placed there. So I'm liking how that's looking. So I'm going to just take away those key pieces, trying to keep some of them sort of together so I can remember how they go on the page. And then I'm just going to start sticking those down. Um, again, starting obviously with the bottom pieces, the bigger pieces. And, uh, and then just sort of building up from there. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that looks nice there. And then I'll just continue to add those pieces. Um, I tend to use the Scotch um, dry stick glue. It seems to be less, have less water content than let's say the Pritt stick or the Yoohoo sticks which are because of their high water content tends to make uh, my collage papers wrinkle and the page wrinkle somewhat but this one I found just by using pretty much all of them over over a certain time I found is the sort of the the, the one with the least water content so it, it doesn't have um, result in that sort of wrinkling paper and it, it tends to dry pretty quickly as well probably quicker than the other so you do have to work fairly quickly so you can see now I'm just building up those larger pieces um, 
and quite often, you know, sometimes I find that I want, I, I feel in a minimal mood, so I don't tend to put much on the page. And then other days, I suppose I do get a bit carried away sometimes and I, and I put lots on the page. So really, there's no set t- kind of rule for me. I just go with what feels right, what I'm in the mood for doing. Also, how much time I've got, obviously, because sometimes I have more time to work on a page. Sometimes I've maybe only got half an hour or less. So, again, it really depends um, on a few things as to how much I work on the page. So I've stuck all those major pieces down um, with the glue and I'm just now deciding where I'm going to put this sticker. Um, And because it's transparent, obviously, the layers underneath are going to show through it. Um, and, I, and I really like that effect because, again, it, it just helps merge all those layers and bring it all sort of together a little bit more. So I think just offsetting that a little bit over there. So it overlaps. You can see it's overlapping several of the layers underneath. So you really get that sort of varying effect, which I really like. Um, from the same sort of graphics package that I think I, I think it was a download from Graphics Fairy, I had these lovely sort of egg blue um, sti- uh, stickers that I've created so I'm going to put a few a couple in there because that really nicely goes with the colour theme and ties in with the bird as well um, this little flower here I just fussy cut it out it was from an old wrapping paper that I think some products materials craft materials came wrapped in and I really liked some of the illustrations on the wrapping paper so I just cut those out so as much as possible I'm you know I do try and recycle and use up all those bits and pieces um, that I have in my stash Um, my stash is still far too large and I don't think I'll ever get through it but um, I am trying to limit um, how much I buy at the moment because I really do need to use up a lot of my stuff here so I'm just adding a few pieces of washi tape um, just to uh, again add some different dimension different sizes all of that helps I've just got this lovely washi tape with uh, that has feathers on it um, I've used this a little bit before especially when we did our feather creative challenge with Helen I used these a couple of times so I'm just trimming off that most of the tape is opaque so once I stick it down it'll blend quite nicely and that tape will kind of effectively disappear so I think I'll just stick that onto the edge there so I think that looks really nice again the feathers tying in with the bird and so there's a little bit of sort of um, theming going on as well as the colour so um, just looking so I'd quite like to include um, a little bit of a text in here so this is a, a, a short quote um, again I've printed onto clear sticky label paper and um, again I just want to sort of put that over so it's overlapping a couple of layers um, so you can just that looks like it's kind of been printed on top of the collage layers Okay, so I'm really liking that and I've decided now that I want to add a little bit more um, around the edges, a bit more interest around the edges, filling in a few of some of those gaps. So I've taken one of my rubber stamps, it's an old sort of postcard, back of a postcard stamp. So I'm just again layering these over the top of the stenciling. So again, you know, adding different layers of different media and and, uh, materials just just adds just a bit more interest and I just added a little bit more stamping across that whole collage at the bottom there so it's all now nicely framed I like I'm liking the collage over here just had maybe a little bit more stamping there Um, so I'm pleased pleased with that so far so now I'm going to do a little bit of journaling over on the left hand side here so I'm going to stamp out the date using these alphabet stamps. So I'm just going to quickly put um, that across the top there and with a little speeded up video, just so you don't have to watch me <laughs> add it too slowly. Um, we're just going to add the date, month and the year across the top there. Oh, 
I really love this set of, of letters. Um, they look quite vintage. I've had them for ages and I use them quite a lot, especially for putting dates in. So I'm now just going to write a quick entry into here. And I'm just talking about um, this particular page that I'm looking on. And just uh, I'll speed that up so you're not having to watch every single line that I write. <laughs> And while I'm writing this, I'm thinking about what I could be potentially writing on the opposite page. And I'm now thinking that I probably want to add a little bit more collaging to the right hand side um, over in that sort of opposite um, top right hand corner. So I revisit my stash, look at some of the papers that I've got. Um, again, tying, tying it in a little bit with the left hand corner collage, so selecting a few similar pieces of paper. Um, I've got found a few other more um, blue themed ephemera, so I've got this lovely blue flower stamp sticker, so that goes quite nicely over the top there, and I found through some of the stamps that I've got collected that I've got a few blue ones in that collection so I'm going to add a couple of stamps over the top and um, yeah there's one put that one there and then I think we'll just add a second one somewhere probably around there yeah that looks quite nice Okay, well I'm, I'm liking that. I'm really glad I finished off that, that top right hand corner. I wasn't sure whether to, to do some collaging there, but having written some writing onto the page, I just felt that I didn't want to write as much as, as the whole page, so I just wanted to fill that top right hand corner. And there you have it, that's my journal spread for this week. Thanks for watching.